Okay, so we've got here is the Tamiya 135th scale. This is the Mark IV male uh, British tank, which obviously you should probably know is World War I and the first tanks out, hence being Mark IV. Now, uh, recent news shows, I did mention how there was a definitely a lack of World War I armor, especially when we were coming up for the anniversary, obviously World War I. To be honest, I didn't realize Tamiya was quite that far advanced with their one. Uh, and obviously we got down here is Takam have done them as well. So this, they've got actually the male and female versions of it. This is just the male at the version uh, from Tamiya's uh, stable. This one though comes with a motor, so it's actually drivable, okay? And this is the export version, which comes with a set of figures, which is Tamiya's new set, which you can buy as a standalone as well, okay? Which is something we'll cover uh, later on. Certainly, as I said, I've been wanting to do a World War Tank 1 tank for a while. Very limited on what there is. Yes, there is obviously good markets out there, but not so much in 135th scale. So anyway, here we go. We've got very nice box art, as you can imagine, going right the way through. As I said, this is the export version, which comes with their five-figure set, uh, which is quite nice. It has the motor, little bits down there. There's a couple of uh, deck options for this particular one. As you can see, it's pretty much down here so usual bits and pieces obviously showing the other one there as well and it says it runs on one AA battery and it's got the figure set in there as well uh, the kit number for this one is do, 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 where's the kit number gone uh, kit number is uh, item number 3057-6900 as I said Export version comes with the figure sets. I don't know other ones. This one I bought, uh, I had it on pre-order with Lucky Model in Japan, uh, um, Japan, Hong Kong. Uh, so that was it. So export version, I don't know quite what they mean by that. It could be all the ones that aren't in perhaps Japan won't will have the figures and won't. So not sure how that's actually gonna work. Anyway, in the box we have the said figures, which we'll look at in a moment. Okay, and as you can see, it's a pretty stuffed box with all this stuff down here. We've got a little bit of notice about the, I presume this is the drive sprocket for it, how that goes together. Here we've got quite a weighty bag of all the bits here, as you can see. So we've got some pretty mechanical looking stuff in here, Allen keys, there's our motor and everything else and our switch unit. You know, I know there's people and they've said about why put a motor in it, it's rubbish and all the rest of it. It's just a little bit of fun, why not? If it's in there, build it, you know, you pay for it. Uh, I'm assuming this is more drive wheel stuff, which is probably what that paper notice was about, because it looks like it's very similar to that one down in there. Link sets, uh, obviously we'll go through those in a moment. And then this is, I think goes along with the other one, sprue Y. We'll have to check on that one goes out. And as you can see, it's a pretty stuffed box here. It's quite a lot of bits and pieces going on down in here. And then we have our instructions. Okay. So we've got some decals to look at the moment. This is for the figures. As I say, it's all a little bit odd, all of this one, because we've got some various things in here. So we've got a sheet on background information talking all about the actual uh, vehicle itself. Okay, and we've got the pull out uh, with all the markings, as you can see right the way across there. And we've got some nice uh, detailed shots of the real thing. So we've got a few little reference shots down in there. I'll put them on the close up, you can see this is the male. Now the difference between the male and the female, if you're wondering, is the male has the gun, the cannons. Okay, the female has the machine gun. And they do the hermaphrodite one, which has got both. It's got machine guns and cannons on there. Um, so that is your general difference between it. But generally, the male ones just had the um, six pounder guns on the outward ones. They all had the uh, machine guns on the front, but it's just the way it's actually fitted out. Uh, looking at them. Okay, but as you said, some nice little background information about it there, talking about all the various parts on there uh, as you go through. So there we go, talks about it, you've got the exhaust coming over the top, the six pounder gun, uh, and then we got we got the uh, Lewis uh, 7.62 machine gun on the front and everything else like that. Uh, and that's the unditching beam, if you ever wonder what that bit of wood is over the top, can throw it over the front and then pull itself around. That's generally how it works. Okay, so, quite a nice little extra bit of information. The instructions themselves uh, 
It's probably going to be a little bit odd because we're going to be talking about the mechanical side of things and that's what it's talking about here for putting it through the distances you need to do. You've actually got to build the battery compartment and put the actual terminals in and things like that and then we're off. So putting into the motor which is obviously a one piece drop in and then putting the other areas in. If you didn't want to do it with the motor, I think you're still going to need the motor at the back because it's going to position the rear stuff, but you just don't have to put everything else in if you didn't want to. But why wouldn't you want to? It runs. It's brilliant. Going right the way through, it comes together quite quickly, uh, to be honest, from what I've seen. Uh, the various parts all going in there. Okay, putting in the top uh, over the top. Some more little parts going in. It's going to use the polycap system because the way that the battery fits, uh, you take off the sort of side pod to get to the battery. Uh, the on-off switch is underneath. Okay, so there we go. Some more bits and pieces going in there and then putting in all the little road wheels for the tracks to run on. Talking about holding them into place with tape, which is a nice thing because the side bits lock it all down and in. So when the side plates go on, it holds all those little road wheels in position. Okay, some more things, talking about the road wheels on the other side, doing the same for the other one, more sprockets going in, then putting in the drives, uh, the Lewis machine guns up at the front uh, and around the rear. Okay, talking about the guns, so you've actually got the uh, six pounder gun system going in and the details for those going right the way in. Again, it's using poly counts because they're maneuverable uh, and those types, so that's very nice. Okay. The actual entire thing goes in on the side and then plugs in because your battery is in there and that's how you access the battery so you don't glue it. Okay, exhaust system going in over the top. The track, which is something we'll cover. Um, as I said, I am going to be doing this as a build. It's going to be coming up as one of my sort of more speedy builds we're doing uh, and everything else. But certainly this is the, apparently one of the best track systems there is out there because it is self-locking, snapped together, okay? So there's no glue, there's no pins, and it works extremely well. From everybody I've spoken to who's built this, and I know quite a few people have done it now, they've said it's brilliant. Where normally it, it's boring to hell to put these things together. This one goes together a dream and it works and it holds itself. All the little details going in. So we've got the rail system for the top for the unbreaching bar. Uh, and there we go, the cable goes into the rear. And then obviously, talking about that, um, sorry, the unditching bar going over the top. The switch goes in the bottom, uh, caution sticker. Why would you put that on there? That does, <laughs> I don't know quite why you do that. Um, you're probably not going to want to put that sticker on there. Caution rotating parts in big letters. I'm assuming it's because, obviously, um, what have we done with it? Yes, it's these ones here. Um, I'm assuming these have had to be put on for some type of legal reason uh, from Tamiya, so you're not ever going to use these, but if you did want to put them on, perhaps you've got schools, things like that, then you can do it. It's basically saying caution rotating parts is hot uh, and the on-off thing for it. Probably wouldn't be using those for everyone else. Parts call out, and we're back to the front, okay? So there we go, very nice. Let's have a look at the kit. So we'll start with the big bits in here so staple together in one bag hey look parcel parcel and in bag two okay so in here this is obviously the side ones and what we're looking at is obviously the detail as you can see is beautifully done Okay, for all of this stuff. So this is where your road wheels, this is obviously the outer looking in. Um, and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's probably the better way up for it as it shows how it would go along, something like this. Okay, down in there, quite a nice thing. The unditching bar, you can see at the back, so it's got the bolts running through it. It's not much to it like that. Couple of little things, okay. And again, on the inside, this is where all your road wheels are gonna click into or slide onto, I should say. Okay, and everything else. And you've got the cogs and the various bits for the rear, it's just a mirror as that goes over. So, pretty straightforward. And some more of the detail on this side. So, again, we're looking down onto these, and it goes that way. Okay, as you can see, not tons of detail. Obviously, this is the insides of them, which is no thing. But when you get to the outside, as you can see, actually very nice detail on these. The bolt system, I think that'll take a wash. It's very nice, very sharp, probably what we expect of um, Tamiya anyway. But generally, that's really nice stuff all over that. 
and on the other side as you can see and then down on these as you can see that bolting is all really really nice system on that one and obviously these are going to be able to poly caps in there for actually doing the system so it can actually hold that side pod on for the battery okay, okay so these are the side uh, areas so these guys would fit in and go right the way around again it's this all this bolting detail as you can see it all over here is extremely crisp at no angle is it soft at all and so it doesn't sort of fade off on corners and everything else and you've got nice joins in here with this plating that goes in and where it's bolted in and everything else like that so that's really nice as you can see all the way down here absolutely fantastic and into the middle one and I do have to say if you have never been and obviously and you're in the UK to the Bollington Tank Museum which is a members meet we went there last month two months ago now uh, when we had the members weekend and everything else if you haven't been you've got to go okay if, because you can see this very tank there you've got all the marks of British tank all the way through um, and everybody else's so to speak and when you're up close to these things absolutely amazing and obviously you've got them set into dioramas giant ones um, and uh, it really gives a great scale effect to these things and you understand how big they are and considering how cumbersome they were and what they did and obviously you can get inside them so you, for your references and everything else like that there we go that is obviously quite a large sprue here going through some of the details again no soft molds no flash mind you you wouldn't expect any of that but generally you know we've got the entrance hatch down there and the vents looking very very nice all of this stuff this hole here is obviously for the on off switch which will be on the bottom okay and then just into the smaller parts beautifully nice and crisp and last up we have it's got a duplicate sprue so we just look at the one uh, as you can see pretty nice stuff this is all the wheels uh, as you can imagine going right the way through and we've got the drive sprockets and all the areas as it goes down and obviously that's the gun for the gun areas and these are the shields uh, for them and they're obviously the gun mounts down here very very nice so just last of all we just want to have a play with this this is their track link system and I say I've never touched this before it's the first time I've even opened the box so we just get a few of these out just to see how well they work okay so you've got a system you've got very nice detail Okay, you've got a small little snip mark on these, you can probably see them on all, pretty well it goes. And then what you've actually got is this hook system as it's all going to go together. So basically you click one over one side, okay, and then you come in and it just, it's no effort. Actually, I thought you were going to have to really pull it on. Okay, but again, slide one side on and it clicks, slide one side on and it clicks, and if you do the other just do a handful of that and it clicks that is brilliant and really really easy and as you can see that will give you a really nice effect but to be honest that's one of those where it probably only take you 10 minutes you click them all together and you're good to go instead of the farting around what you do with some of them so even i'll be happy to build that one so there we go the track system is definitely a winner this motorized set as i say we just have a, a quick look in here and don't forget you have paid for this so you might as well do it so we've got the drive bar we've got the motor unit itself which is obviously very heavily geared so it just trundles along at the sort of correct speed we've got a tube of grease there which also you're gonna have to grease everything up before you do it we've got a little screwdriver we've got the battery tray nuts and bolts the string and the poly cap and we got some chain in there as well okay we got the drive metal sprockets and we got the shims i presume they are quite a nice touch and then we got the contacts and the velcro and everything else for holding all the bits in there so that's a very nice touch and then as i said we got more gearing sets and everything in there so like that okay so last up we have the crew figures okay it's in a light so this is basically you get this set free in amongst it okay so actually what you're getting is I remember it's five I think it is isn't it I think it's five figures 
So yeah, in this one here, you get the officer standing, the rifleman uh, running, kneeling. Okay, obviously uh, half and half. You've got the machine gunner lying down, uh, and obviously you get a little bit of gear around them as well. And obviously you got your colour callouts and the various things on there. Okay, so in the bag. Again, you know, this kit, I can't remember exactly how much it was now. I've had it on pre-order so long, I can't remember what it was now. Uh, I think it's around about the sort of £50 mark. But you do get, you know, obviously the motor, it can't be cheap and all the rest of it. And you get the figure set. So if you do want to do a diorama and things like that, you've certainly got the option for it. So, as you can see, if we start on an area, we've got the legs, the various, we've got the torsos, very nicely detailed. More legs, obviously different positions. More torsos, looking at the faces. Quite a nice face system there and everything else. And then down here we've got helmets, bags. So we've got the uh, got the Lewis machine gun down there. We've got the actual uh, the helmets and the baggage and all the bits and pieces. And we've got the rifles bayoneted and not. Okay, and this one, this one just the same. Yeah, it's just the same, it's just a mirror. Okay, so I just want to see what the difference is between what you get in here and here. Yeah, so that's the difference. Starter for 10, obviously, different color, plastic. So the one comes from the kit is light gray, the standalone is just normal. And then we've got the bits there. Uh, you don't get instructions with it or anything else like that, so, but obviously you don't really need them because you can see how they go together on the back, just like that. So there we go, that is it. World War One, absolutely fantastic that it's getting the recognition it deserves. It's certainly been overlooked over the years, by myself included. I am just as guilty as everybody else. Uh, okay, but after building the Wingnut Wings kit, uh, and hopefully I'm gonna be building this one very, very soon, it should sort of, you know, pick up the old interest again. We will have next week, we've got, these are the take -em kits, which, you know, we've done, we've done reviews on them recently, um, but obviously, you know, if you're watching this at a later date, have a look for the take -em one, because we've got the Mark IV, which is the same tank as a male and a female version. But as I said, I'm gonna be reviewing both of these next week.